So it's winter here in New England. I'm actually going to uh, put together some videos about edible inner bark of trees. This is one of the only food sources you can get in the winter from uh, plant material. It's one of the only substantial food sources you can get in the winter from plant material. I'm going to uh, test all these out myself and see if any of them seem worthy of uh, as actual survival food and let you know how they taste. Um, and then at the end I'll, I'll rate them one to five and let you know which ones ended up being the best. I found this white pine that fell over so I can take the opportunity to show you about the edible inner bark. White pine is one of the best uh, woods for edible inner bark. I'll show you why. So the thing with the edible inner bark is you gotta get a piece that's lower on the trunk. So you're gonna be damaging the tree. The reason I was excited to find this down branch is because obviously I'm not damaging the tree. This branch just fell yesterday probably. Um, and it's gonna be dying anyway. So I can take as much of the bark as I, as I want to. So it looks like this is that I cut into the wood here, but that's not actually uh, the wood of the tree. Right here, you can see I peeled this part back. This is the inner bark, and it's pretty thick. Um, you'd imagine if you debarked this whole branch, you could actually have a lot of this material. Um, it's soft and spongy. You can just chew it. It kind of chews like bubble gum, actually. Uh, it's very fibrous. White pine has a strong flavor, but uh, it's not unbearable and you get used to it. Uh, but the quantity here, uh, white pine better, tastes better than spruce in my opinion. The quantity here is important because there are calories in there. So if you can get a lot of this material, uh, you can add it to, like if you're cooking something, like a soup, or you can just eat it, um, you'll at least be adding calories. Also, People are surprised to know that the uh, these small twigs. I'm just trying to get that focused. These small twigs are actually soft, also. At the end of that, even in the winter, is still soft enough to chew on. In the summer, you can get long shoots of white pine that could be a foot long and soft enough to eat. So there's definitely calories in there. You can actually eat parts of white pine like a vegetable. Um, not to mention in the winter you can use the uh, needles for tea um, and like I said the flavor takes a little bit getting used to. One more part I forgot to mention, not only can you eat the needles but um, the cones in the springtime you can eat. So there's male cones and female cones, the green cones, not the dried brown uh, pine cones that you're used to seeing. Before that stage they're nice and green. Um, and you can chew on those. Again, they have a strong flavor. There's none here because it's still winter. In the spring, uh, we'll start to see those. So what you want to do is just cut right into the bark. There we go. We can peel that off. Um, so that's right where the inner bark meets the wood. This, this is the inner bark that you can just peel off and eat. Like I said, it kind of, it, it's kind of like bubble gum. Um, but eventually, if you keep chewing it, it'll almost all of it break down, and you can eat the whole thing. Um, this is a black birch. They actually have an edible uh, inner bark. I took this piece of bark off another birch, and you can see the inside. So this material here. Um, it's not soft, uh, but it's crumbly. Uh, you can add it to things like if you're boiling water to give some calories. You don't want the thin outer bark, but all this crumbly material underneath, um, that can be added uh, to things. Like I said, to add some flavor, some birch flavor, and um, some calories. Eastern hemlock. Uh, the Needles and foliage can be used in a tea, uh, just like pine and spruce. Uh, this tree does suffer from woolly adelgid insect in a lot of its range, um, but it still seems to survive and reproduce, so there's still plenty of them around. Make sure you don't get the hemlock confused with the yew, which is uh, very toxic. 
and can be found sometimes in the forest in New England. It's typically a landscape plant, but they do grow side by side. I've seen them right next to each other. They look similar, but the U has much larger needles, a little bit different color. Um, I saw this fallen spruce log and I just wanted to show you about the edible inner bark on the spruce. It's a good opportunity to show you because uh, most of the edible inner bark is on the main trunk. So you actually have to kill the tree to harvest a lot of it. Um, so right here you can see the light colored wood that's just regular wood. Uh, this stuff here is soft. This light brown uh, inner bark. And then the outer layer of bark is hard. So what you're going for, the part that's edible and contains calories, is this thin layer of light brown right here. It does not taste as good as it does on like a pine tree. Um, all these evergreen trees take some getting used to with the flavor. Uh, but it does have calories and it's edible and it's not terrible tasting. Uh, you can get used to it and eat it. The elm tree has edible inner bark. Uh, first, before I go into that, I'm going to uh, show you a couple identification features. If you look at the small branches of an elm tree, you'll see these alternating uh, like ball-shaped buds. This is a Siberian elm. The American elm has bigger buds. Um, so those are two different identification features. American elm also has bigger leaves. Um, the edibility of the inner bark is, is uh, true on both trees. Another identification feature for the elm tree is that the leaves, at the base of the leaf, it's uneven on both sides. Uh, obviously I can't show you that in the winter, but the base of the leaf where it connects to the leaf stem, it's uneven. One side's always a little bit lower than the other, and that's a really good identification feature in the summer when you look at the leaf and they're uneven at the bottom, there's a very good chance it's an elm. You'd still want to double check, make sure it's alternate. Um, and the buds look like elm buds and the bark looks like elm but that uh, many times has indicated to me that it was elm tree so this is obviously just um, saplings or water sprouts coming out of a stump so this stump is going to be cut down anyway that's the only reason why I'm damaging the bark here uh, so to collect the inner bark just uh, cut down with a knife and go a little Try to cut in a little deeper than you think. The inner bark usually is thicker than what it looks like. This part that's sticking up is the inner bark. And the good thing about the elm tree is that you get a substantial amount of inner bark. I took this off a pretty small branch. If you had taken it off the main trunk, you would have got a much larger section of inner bark. Most inner barks are bitter. Or, in the case of pine and spruce, just very strongly flavored. So this is definitely one of the best inner bark to chew. You can tell it has calories because of the thickening agent in the bark. That's similar to like a starch in the bark. So look at this piece of inner bark. This is not uh, wood. This is actually inner bark, edible inner bark on a thicker part of the tree. So you can see how much material is actually there. So once you get the inner bark separated a little bit, then it's easy to just uh, pull it off the, the outer bark. Okay, so the five that we went over are the birch tree, the Canadian hemlock, the spruce, uh, the pine, and the elm. That's in no particular order. So I'll let you know which one's best to worst. Definitely the best one by far was the elm tree. You could tell it had a lot of calories and it tasted good. It actually was a little bit sweet and there was no bad flavor. Uh, if I got stranded somewhere and I had to eat tree bark, elm tree would be my number one choice. My second choice would definitely be white pine. I had once written on my website that it was difficult to make it palatable. Um, after trying all these barks, I definitely have changed my mind on that. White pine is one of the better ones despite the strong flavor. Once you start chewing on the inner bark, the flavor actually goes away pretty quickly. Um, Tied with white pine would probably be the birch tree because even though it is grainy and sort of woody and it's not soft, uh, the flavor is not bad. It's not very bitter and you can definitely add it to things that you're cooking. Uh, next would be 
the spruce tree. It's got a lot of the same properties as the pine, but the flavor is worse in my opinion. Um, but you can get a substantial amount of uh, inner bark of spruce tree and it's soft. And the worst option is the Canadian hemlock because it just tastes awful. The needles are one of my favorite for tea for the Canadian hemlock, also known as Eastern hemlock. But the um, inner bark was way too bitter to just eat without diluting it. Maybe you could make a tea out of it. Uh, hopefully you learned something. And please feel free to comment. There's not a lot of people out there that eat inner bark on a regular basis. So if you have, um, let me know. Leave some comments. Uh, one more thing worth mentioning is that I read that uh, red maple inner bark was edible. Um, you can definitely get syrup similar to maple syrup, which is usually made from the sugar maple. You can get that from red maple. So I expected the inner bark to have a decent taste, but it didn't. It was very bitter. Um, if there's some good way to eat inner bark of red maple, and anyone knows, let me know, uh, because there's so many red maple, they're extremely common. So if there's some way to uh, cook it or prepare it so that it tastes better, that would be something to experiment with. Hopefully you've learned a lot. Um, and if you like the video, please click like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.